So um, I'm going to close up by offering a solution. And, I, and, and by solution, by problem, I mean this spreading virus of, hey, you need to pretend you're small or you need to recognize that you had more of something than somebody else. Therefore, reparations or even you owe them some empathy or you owe them whatever. Okay, I don't want to subscribe to that, so I want to offer up um, what I think of as sort of an opposite of PC languaging, and it's called nonviolent communication. And it's based on a book called Nonviolent Communication. And the reason I bring this up is because NVC uh, is a it's a, a language that embraces um, non-coercion and taking responsibility for your own feelings. So this whole triggering thing, I didn't bring up that word, but I'm assuming many of you have heard the word triggering. It's the social justice word. We'll use this word to shut people down um, or otherwise let them know that, that what was said was damaging to them in some way. Uh, I'm triggered that you mentioned <laughs> So fuck you. Uh, now Stephen could claim that I was triggering him. Um, that wasn't necessarily nonviolent communication just now. <laughs> <laughs> on my part, but I think you guys get the point. I could say whatever. I could talk about um, abortion, guts, death, um, hell, whatever, and any number of people could choose to, to get triggered. Now, in NBC, Novel Communication, we take responsibility for our feelings, and thus power. So, I, and, and there I'm just saying that I believe power and responsibility to go hand in hand. So if a person says something to me and I don't like it, I'm triggered by it, my emotions are triggered, then how am I most powerful? Am I most powerful by defending or attacking back, trying to change them, change their language? Or am I most powerful by being like recognizing where it's coming from or even guessing? Like, hey, wow, um, sounds like, you know, if they say to me something like, hey man, you're really stinky, your armpits bug me, I uh, wish you would go away. Um, well, how about this? Um, I, you know, you're really, you're really boring me, so I wish you'd shut up. So there, I could be defensive, say, yeah, we suck too, or, or oh, gosh, I, I must suck. Or I could say, hey, you know, it sounds like, is it your need for um, mental stimulation not getting met? And, you know, or you really value stimulating conversation, and you're not getting it right now? So there's many ways that we can be, and that right there, that's a practice of empathy. So not only are we being um, Aikido with our words, not letting them touch us, but also we're taking responsibility and we're showing them that they can take responsibility for their issues. And we're also creating empathy. And I think every time we create empathy, we show it, anybody in earshot is going to take that on a little bit. It's going to be like, whoa. You know, even if it's in their subconscious, they're gonna be thinking a little bit more in these terms like, whoa, there's an interesting way to respond to an attack. We don't even have to see it as an attack. We can say, oh wow, you, you, know, you really wanted more of this kind of thing, and you're not getting it right now. So there I see is sort of a, a, a tool to use to not only build empathy, uh, deepen our relationships, but also um, spread the counter to this virus that could be a pretty bad thing if we let it continue to, to go on and on. So, any more questions? I just wonder if the whole white privilege thing is more of an issue here in the United States, or is it more like worldwide? My parents are both Jamaican, and my parents have always taught me to be really proud, you know, just, you know, be educated, speak well, you know, be knowledgeable in what you're talking about, and you'll be fine. My parents came here in the 70s, they've never had any issues whatsoever, finding jobs, they're very successful, live in great neighborhoods, drive nice cars, I mean, they're fine. They've had the same issues that any African American would have. Same thing with me, I mean, I have, I work in an environment where I have, you know, whites and blacks and Hispanics working with me and I don't have any issues getting along with them, so, I don't know. So is it an objective thing that 100% is about this culture, or is it more of like a tool that people are using just like any other tool to kind of... Uh, I mean, the thing is, is that I feel like people are born the way they are. You're born white, I'm born black, but that's pretty much the only difference between you and I. Sounds and 
there's people in my, pe there's black people that I would feel would, that are damaging to me. I mean, I've been called a Oreo, you know, all my life, um, you know, and other things just because people didn't understand me, they didn't understand my, my background, you know, so, yeah. <laughs> so, in the beginning, you're asking the question: Do you do you think this is worldwide or just the United States? And I'm not sure if that was rhetorical or not. I don't know the answer to that. I'm wondering if you have suspicions, ideas. Um, I didn't really get from what you just said. If you do, I guess it was more of a rhetorical question. But I just remember when I was a child, I was like 12 years old. And I remember my dad. I think we were shopping at an apartment store. I remember he went to look at some shoes. And there was a bunch of like white guys or whatever around him or whatever. I think it was like in the 80s. And they kind of like made a lot of room for him. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad's like a big, you know, he's a big Jamaican guy. So, you know, at first I guess he looks intimidating. I don't know. But um, what he said to me kind of like stood out in my mind. He's just like, whatever, it's of no consequence. And he just went about his business. That's it. Anyone that talks to my dad, they know he is completely like, Amazing. He knows a lot. I mean, my husband has learned so much from him. I mean, he pretty much is like the jack of all trades. I mean, he's just, he's just brilliant, in my opinion. So, yeah, he is powerful. And how he has privilege? How, how, how powerful would he have been if he had yeah, chose right. to take offense? Then, you know, honestly, people will be how they are, in my opinion. If you're going to be racist against me, I mean, whatever. I mean, I, that's just how I I, I take it. You're that's. Honestly, what am I trying to say? You are, that's your disadvantage that you're, you're racist and you're acting the way you are. It's your loss. Me. Yeah, it's your loss, basically. It's not a personal offense. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. So if they, if they don't like me, they probably don't like any black person. So whatever, you know? But I've met great people of all races, and they've been very supportive of me and kind to me, so... I can't say that one race is better than another, or one group of people have treated me better than another. I've you haven't quite felt the uh, uh, not having white privilege as being a negative thing for you. You quite no, yeah. no. And if someone, whether you're white, black, or whatever, if someone has to struggle to get somewhere, you are going to be freaking amazing once you actually get there because of the challenges that you had. You're going to be fucking badass. That's, That's kind of a privilege in itself, right there. <laughs> struggle <laughs> privilege. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to wrap up my talk because I, I know I've probably gone over it. sounds like, uh, looks like we have a couple more people who want to talk. Uh, I, Daniel? Hit me a meetup group. Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> I hate to be that guy, but I feel like I'm the only one in the room that doesn't know what volunteerism is. So can you uh, just give me a little definition so I can follow along? Mm. So to me, volunteerism means all transactions are voluntary. So we, we don't, we tend to be like, ver, um, involuntary government versus voluntary governance. Uh, so those two concepts, I lean, you know, I support fully voluntary governance. So you know, it's, it's based on free market anarchy. Okay, so thank you all for listening. Oh yeah, and somebody wanted to you know, plug the uh, Novi Communication Meetup group that happens on Wednesdays. So you can search for Emotional Intelligence on meetup.com, and we do the group on Wednesdays.